Hello and welcome to uh, lesson 14 of the Learning Guitar series. I took a little break in between uh, lesson 13 and now. I had some stuff to do and to deal with. And at the same time, hopefully, this gave you uh, a chance to um, catch up with the, you know, the incredible amount of material that we actually discussed in the first 13 lessons. Uh, in this case, we're discussing the steel G shape. <laughs> And this, this time we're going to look at it from the point of view of its arpeggios. And um, I'm evolving, so I kind of learned now how, to, how I can actually show you the PDF. Um, they, you know, look in the description, that's where you're going to find it uh, for you to download. is a Google Drive link, so, you know, no need for you to sign up to emails or a newsletter or something like this. So let's have a quick look at what we're discussing here. Uh, so basically G major, G shape major arpeggios, and you have triads. I did it in the key of A because it's kind of a, com a comfortable, especially when it comes to this kind of uh, form. Usual, like I did for all the other shapes, arpeggios, major seven, major six, nine, six, nine, other nine, uh, until all the way to the modal arpeggio. Here you have the second octave. And, and um, sorry, here you have the two octaves. So here is the first octave, here is the second octave, and here the exercise is actually combining them. And after that, what you have is basically an um, example of how to exercise it. So exercise one, exercise two is the ascending version and the descending version. Um, I'm going to show it to you once I'm through with the, showing you the PDF and the alternating version and the two octaves version. This is the harmonized Ionian model arpeggio. And uh, as you can see, the next exercise will be applied to a major seven arpeggio, but you could also apply this to a major triad and is framed within the cage system. Obviously, if you uh, didn't have a look at my previous lesson, um, you might want to, as that's where I explain, you know, how I frame these kind of things uh, within also the cage system and the three notes per string kind of system. Uh, I like studying arpeggios from the root, first of all, like we have done in the previous exercises one, two, and three, and so forth and so on, because it kind of trains your ear at the same time, and I don't find the cage system really good from that point of view, okay? Um, after that, you have, let's go back to the PDF. After that, you have exercise with regards to groups, so group of three, group of four. Again, I'll demonstrate them to you, so it's kind of uh, easy. Now, as this is kind of completing uh, the five shapes, from what regards the cage system, I devised a couple of exercises, in this case exercise five. This is to um, to facilitate vertical transition. And <clears throat> what I mean by that is you're going to move across shapes, but without uh, moving across the neck. Okay? And so in the case of this particular exercise, you're going to go from G to F to D to C and then to A. And as you can see, this is all the five shapes. Uh, e shape, a D shape, a C shape, in this case it's D major, but that's a C shape, an A shape, and finally a G shape, okay? Um, once again, like after that, the, the opposite would be exercises that facilitate the horizontal transition. Uh, so stuff that looks like this. And uh, the point of it in this case is basically going across shapes, right? As opposed to staying in, you know, sorry, across the neck, as opposed to you staying in the same, in the same area. And uh, as I'm gonna show you later on, I mean, it's like, we're gonna choose uh, an area of the neck, but as we subdivide the necks in cages, we can repeat the same exercises in different, in different area of the neck. The entire point of it ultimately is that we are able to, to play anything anywhere. Um, you know, that's, that's the important part. I mean, I said this before and I you know, don't mind to say it again. We got three octaves of an half and we want to exploit them, both from a soloing point of view and then also eventually from a chordal point of view. So the next, the next area of the also page four of is a massive exercise. So exercise uh, the, the entire shapes. Uh, you, we're starting from G 
and on thread three and we progress across, across the neck. So for convenience, I wrote one bar per chord. So there is a chord change every bar, but if you need more time, you can do say two bars of this, two bars of this, or you could do four bars of this, four bars of this. It doesn't really matter. So it depends uh, if you're playing uh, in eight notes, in quarter notes, 16 notes, triplets, so. The letter in parentheses, so this, E, D, the one in red, represents the shape that you should be using in executing the arpeggio. So this allows, this particular exercise is what I just mentioned. Um, in other words, is you have an exercise that basically starts here and allows you to practice the arpeggios in all shapes, all the way up the neck. So this is quite a difficult exercise, so it's going to take a little bit. Once you get it, you realize that you know it. And um, you're going to find it is incredibly beautiful and incredibly rewarding if you try, for example, in solo. And you start to be able to highlight the chord changes while you're soloing because, it's, you know, all your guide tones, so-called guide tones, notes, thirds, fifths, they're all there, they're in the arpeggios. So you'll be able to move from one chord to another solo-wise and at the same time being aware of what all your guide tones are. So this kind of exercise, you will be, you know, uh, G in the shape of E, then F, then D, then you have C major seven, then you have A major seven, and then you have A flat, and you know, it, it, just, it just moves around, F sharp. One last thing for those uh, into trivia somehow. Um, as you can see, and that's the reason it's called the cage system. C A G E D C A G E D C A. So, you know, it repeats itself. The actual word caged, okay? And that's, uh, I guess, where, I guess, I'm pretty sure that's where the name comes from. Now, let's look at um, just a few examples on how to approach the, the exercises. Um, let's switch camera. So, um, the, f the first part of the, of the PDF is obviously written in the key of A, and the reason being that, say, when we do A major 7, we find ourselves playing this. So I'm trying to use, you know, not to use an uh, open string in this case. Um, triads. And as you'll see it in exercise 1 and 2, but the way you want to practice is chromatically up. Don't forget to tell yourself in which key you are. This particular arpeggio here is where your root notes are. There are three of them. One, two, and three. So this is A triad, this is B flat, this is B. Uh, the fact of telling it to yourself will help your um, um, visual memory, okay? At some point you'll, you'll see it in your head. So B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. And of course, reversed. So, starting from the fifth, then the third, then the root note. And then alternated. So, one ascending, one descending. Right? Same thing for major seven. That's B flat. Of course, you want to do this to a metronome. I suggest you practice rather slowly if you've never done this before, or you practice at a speed where you don't do too many mistakes, right? Again, muscle memory. I discussed all this stuff in lesson one, so you, you see where I come from with all that. Um, and again, you want to go through all the arpeggios so with the same kind of uh, up and down the neck, ascending and descending, so you have uh, all the exercises, basically the one octave on the PDF, so you have the sixth, so one, three, five, six. That's, this would be the reverse version. Uh -oh. With the ninth, so one, three, five, nine, so. And backwards. And alternate. Same thing for all of them, uh, all the way to the to the modal arpeggio. And the modal arpeggio, as explained before, is basically a vertical version of a scale. So it contains exactly the same intervals, but in different order. Here we're discussing an Ionian, and in lesson 13, I tackle the same shape, but um, 
from the perspective of the scale and we ended up with this where this is like six seven one two so second third fourth fifth sixth seven and major seven and root note again and and i can continue with that in this case it's the same as that thing it's just that you have one three five major seven nine which is equal to two eleven which is equal to four 13, which is equal to 6. So if you think about it, it's 1, 3, 5, 7, 2, 4, 6. It's the same as the scale, but the scale is an horizontal structure. So, you know, intervals of seconds and minor seconds, and this is the same as Pell does in arpeggio. Okay? And when it comes to exercise, you know, groups, what I call, uh, you'll see in the PDF, I call them uh, group of three, group of four. Basically, you're harmonizing this in group of three, group of four. So instead of playing it this way, you're going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, group of three notes at a time, right? And you have this kind of effect. Same thing, group of four, one, two, three, 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 four. Now, when it comes to this particular form, okay, it poses, there are different approaches, and I wrote both in the PDF. Now, when it comes to this particular form, so the major seven, okay, just a very brief discussion, I, I wrote it in the PDF uh, that can be executed kind of in two different ways. Reason being that for some of you might be uncomfortable as we are used to have say one finger, one fret for other types of arpeggios. In this case, we're having say four finger, third finger, then we need to slide, slide. I mean, we need to kind of use the second finger for the fifth, right? Because the major seven is still more on the left hand side. So we end up with this. Um, especially um, people that like three notes per strings kind of approach, uh, they rather do it this way. So you have third finger, second finger, first finger, and the major seven is here. So instead of playing it this way, we play it this way. Right? They're both valuable, they're both beautiful. I wrote them both, and now probably in this way you understand why I wrote them both. Um, so same thing when you're practicing the two octaves version of this. So this would be the second octave. And again, I assume that you already practiced it this way individually, but then we connect them. So this is two octaves of a major seven arpeggio. And another way of doing would be this. So now we're using the major seven on this side. I thought it was uh, relevant to actually point this out. Um, the cage system version compared to the root to root kind of version, it's only adding one note, for example, when it comes to the major seven. We, if this is a root note, obviously this is a major seven. So we are extending it by one note. Okay, and of course this is a six, so when you're practicing major six, right, which is this, you could start from here, right, because that's a six. That's the second octave. Okay? And once we do the minors, you suddenly realize that sounds very much like a minor page, and that's actually what it is. But let's not, you know, let's not rush ahead. Uh, as we move forward, so the following is <coughs> so exercise five. So the exercise is devised for you to practice vertically. So in that case, we start from a G major seven, and this would be the shape of E. F major seven. D major seven. C major seven. A major seven. And that's your five shapes, okay? And then he moves in A flat. So you can move this exercise chromatically all over the neck. Okay, so you should continue. So I only wrote the first uh, 24 bars of it. So starting from G, so we'll go G, uh, A flat, A, B flat, B. 
you should definitely continue it. Or anyway, use the exercise, the very last exercise on the PDF, as it kind of contains them all. Um, instead, like the, the following exercise is the one for the transitions across shapes. Um, sorry, the transition, <coughs> the horizontal transition. So you're playing the same chord. So you're playing, say, G. In this case, you're going to be playing G in the shape of E, G in the shape of D, G in the shape of C, G in the shape of A, and finally G in the shape of G. Okay? So you're basically kind of going... That's the second shape. That's the third shape. Fourth shape. And you're back to the first one. The guitar has got the seventh shape. I mean, like if you have 22 frets, I believe. Okay? And you just do that ups and down. Okay? What you might want to do is to uh, change key. Uh, maybe on a daily basis if you practice every day. Uh, so the exercise is written in G, but maybe like say tomorrow you do this in the key of D. Key of D is basically in this case, if you look at the root notes, if you start here, you will find yourself with this. First of all, the shape of C, then the shape of A, then the shape of G. The sequence is always the same, that's why the cage system. So once you have that sequence going on, I mean, the shape of A will always follow the shape of C. The shape of G will always follow the shape of A, okay? And so if you think of it, it's going to be, you know, caged, right? Uh, so let's say, for example, on today I want to practice in the key of F. The first F I encounter here would include empty strings, but this, you know, basically is your shape of G. The shape of G is always followed by the shape of D, okay? Which is always followed by the shape of C, which is always followed by the shape of A which is always followed by the shape of G. And then you're back at the shape of E. So I will start the exercise from this. And so that's F. And after the shape of D, you always have the shape of C. So and right now I'm doing everything in major seven, by the way. That's shape of A, right? Um, shape of G, so yeah. Um, and pretty much like this kind of concludes this particular lesson and you know in a way like there is yeah of course as, as, as with everything there is a, there is a lot to practice and uh, take your time you know <laughs> I don't have other, other suggestions from that point of view um, as I said the goal is to learn these arpeggios across the neck of the guitar now you have the entire five shapes so like in the last lesson we dealt with the scales and hopefully with having taken this break you, by now you can you, you, you know you're going towards the idea of mastering scales in Ionia scales in every key across the entire neck no matter what right to this now we are adding the arpeggios which will give you the benefit of you starting to understand the guide tones you know for chord changes in a second i'm going to show you instead how you can eventually practice this in terms of uh, enjoying it you know some playing time as opposed to just practicing okay so let's look at how we can you know practice this a little bit but also while playing so we can enjoy ourselves because I know that you know just practicing uh, exercises uh, you know in the long run is not exactly fun so well, let's have a look at um, the way we could do this it's not dissimilar to the way we've done it before so I created the loop and I used um, you know, the chord progression we discussed so I'm using G going into F going into D going into C, going into A, and then it goes back to G and it keeps looping. Of course, you don't have to play these particular chord forms and, and you can, you know, 
is a good is a good time and is a good way also to practice your coordinate knowledge. And the next lesson we're gonna look at the chords deriving from the shape, and that's also gonna close the circle when it comes to major chords because we looked at all the five shapes by then. In this case, what what I used for my loop is a G major seven uh, going into F major seven um, shape D going into D major seven going into C major 7 and then going into G major I mean I like, I like particularly this one which is, which is a 9 sorry A major sorry not G of course like it can be done definitely it can be done across the neck I mean this would be G that's F right that's D major 7 that's G major 7 or G major 7 um, going into A major 7 as I said this could be a good exercise for practicing so let's go back to the arpeggios playing and I have my loop set up. Let's let's press play to it and I'll show you the way I would do it. Stop this. 
and, and, and yeah, you just continue on that. I mean, the only limitation I suggest is that at this stage, you don't mix too much scales and arpeggios in your soloing. So you kind of limit yourself in using arpeggios as much as you can to try and build solo line, lead lines. Uh, because, of course, that, you know, is going to give you a sense of where your guide tones are as opposed to trying to run scales up and down. Uh, once we're done next lesson, the chords, at that point, you will slam everything together and you'll have, uh, you know, the bigger picture. To me, it's basically a triangle. That's how I see it. We're doing the same thing from different point of views. So if we're comping, we are the guys playing the chords. And if we're soloing, we're still expressing those chords, either using scales or either using arpeggios. That's why I say I see it as a triangle with chord scales and arpeggios, basically spelling the same thing from three different point of views. Arpeggios are very useful beside, you know, they can, they can be very nice in terms of you know, soloing with them. Uh, but in terms of they really give you a map uh, in your head about where your guide tones are. So, you know, I could play you the same progression without backing and you probably still hear the chord changes. Let's see. So G. F. So like in a way, I'm pretty sure you're kind of hearing the chord changing, right? Although there is no backing track right now. And arpeggios are fantastic for doing that on top of other things. So I hope you enjoyed um, the lesson. Um, next one is going to be about the chords, literally chord forms deriving from uh, a G major shape. And well, if you have any question or comment, just leave it in the comment section and when I have time I'll try and address it um, if you fancy subscribe I mean it's like, don't forget to download the PDFs obviously and um, well that's it I'll see you next time bye